And I think it's going very well. We've had the relationship between the two presidents is among the most scrutinized and most puzzling in the world. Even before his inauguration, President Trump appeared deeply reluctant to criticize the Russian leader. But today, the White House took the very step that may hurt the Kremlin the most, targeting the vastly wealthy elite that surround Vladimir Putin, those who operate at the intersection of Russian politics and money. Today's sanctions and the totality of the administration's actions, which are in keeping with Congress's wishes, prove the president is absolutely correct when he says no one has been tougher on Russia. We want a positive relationship with the Russian government, but for this to happen, there must be a significant change in their behavior. That behavior ranges from Russian military support for the Syrian regime that helps to keep Assad in power, to Putin's decision to annex Crimea and send Russian forces into eastern Ukraine. The intention by the Americans is to hit the president's inner circle. The list names seven Russian oligarchs, including Oleg Deripaska, a billionaire industrialist close to President Putin, Alexei Miller, the boss of Russian energy giant Gazprom, and Kirill Shamilov, Putin's former son-in-law. Twelve companies linked to the tycoons are also named, as well as a state-owned arms dealer that sells weapons to the Syrian government. And there are 17 senior government officials on the list, including a former prime minister. The wealth and foreign assets of Russian oligarchs, like this mega yacht owned by Deripaska, may now be in jeopardy. This action does bolster the claim that Trump made earlier this week when he held a press conference with the three Baltic presidents. Nobody's been tougher on Russia than I have. The still tougher measures announced today may also address suspicions that have long circulated that Moscow holds compromising material on Trump himself an issue I asked him about before he even took office. Would a reasonable observer say that you are potentially vulnerable to blackmail by Russia or by its intelligence agencies? That concern may now have receded, at least until independent counsel Robert Mueller delivers his judgment on allegations of collusion. Next, Putin, seen here meeting with Deripaska in the Kremlin, must decide how to respond. But the two leaders will also want to keep some communication open for on many global issues, from North Korea to Syria and to arms control, that dialogue remains vital.